What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our SEC football channel. LSU coming off a top 10 finish in bowl victory over uh, Central Florida, of course. Uh, a nice year under uh, Coach O. We got to Billy Gomilla on the line from And the Valley Shook, the SB Nation platform for LSU Athletics. Um, let's talk about the spring game just in regards to expectations. There's, uh, as you mentioned, a lot of known factors, but uh, what's going to catch your eye besides the offensive line? Any particular players that you would like to see jump out? Well, obviously, we'd like to see the quarterbacks do well. Um, you know, that's always a big thing for LSU. Uh, Joe Burrow w w was pretty solid last year. He he's kind of a, a game management work worker type of quarterback. You know, pick your pick your cliche. But I like this. I think there's a chance for him if, if the rest of the offense can grow around him. I think that there's a chance that he could do a lot better just based on his supporting cast. If he's got more in the tank than he showed, and you know we saw him really kind of do really well in that bowl game and threw for I think 394 yards and, and four four touchdowns and really kind of take off, and maybe that's maybe that's more his ceiling and and with with the right players around him and seeing those receivers, younger receivers uh, still coming along, we're really hoping to see them kind of. I'm not expecting them to necessarily light up the spring, but I'm looking for guys who can get open and catch the ball reliably. And that would be a really nice thing to see on, on Saturday. Uh, you know, even if they're not necessarily going for 50 yard touchdowns, just converting third downs, keeping the chains moving, things like that. The things that, that will, that, that will lead to, to big days against secondaries that aren't as talented as LSU's is this year. Um, offense, uh, all running game, you're waiting on two big time freshman tailbacks to arrive in the summer that I think are going to really press for playing time. So I think you're still kind of incomplete there. You got some veteran back who I do think will help, but they're, they're not going to be your, your bell cows. I don't think by the end of the season. Yeah, Joe Burrow at uh, just under 58% completion percentage, uh, 2,900 yards, 16 TDs, five interceptions. We could probably place those numbers and put them right on top of Danny Etlings. And it was probably pretty much, although it may have looked a little bit different, uh, pretty much the same productivity. And uh, you kind of alluded to it, uh, Billy, in regards to the expectations of Joe Burrow. When you get a quarterback from a place like Ohio State who was supposed to challenge for the job, some people expected more. Uh, but some people are, I hear nothing to my channel and I know that I'm getting the cross section of college football fans, nothing but criticism. This guy's marginal or they use a little bit more colorful language, uh, just that, that he's really not that good. But at the same time, I think people forget that the guy stepped on campus at the beginning of August, never really got acclimated and boom, he's got the job and he's facing Miami right out of the gate. Yeah. I, I you know, do I think he, he has all SEC potential? Probably not, but can he be a good, solid quarterback, good enough to win a lot of games for LSU? You know, Danny Etling won a lot of games here. He, he, he was good enough to, to beat the teams that LSU should be able to beat, and yeah, he struggled against some good defenses, and that's, that's what happens to a lot of quarterbacks. I thought Joe Burrow grew through his, his early part of the year. You know, he had some struggles, but down the stretch, he, he really got better as the season went on, more than anything, he showed that he's willing to take a lot of hits, take a lot of punishment. He's got – he just – he plays with some guts. He, he's definitely a guy that I think in year two you're going to see, I think, that team really respond to him. And, and it wouldn't surprise me if he's one of the team captains and one of the team leaders this year. Uh, you know, is he going to go out there and throw for 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns? Probably not. But can he do a lot better and, and, and be pretty solid? And, and if the rest of the team around him – can rise to that occasion. Yeah, I think there's a misnomer that LSU was loaded on offense last year, and they really weren't. They had some some, some talented freshmen. Running backs were probably not as good as we've, we've had in recent years, and an offensive line that was banged up. And I think all in all, they kind of made the best of it. It, it could have been better, but I, I don't think they're, they're necessarily far off right now. Now, this year is going to be a big litmus test for that, and, and they're going to have to improve. Hey, Billy, for those people that are going to watch the spring game and uh, have an eye toward August and then want to keep their eyes and ears open toward tracking um, August camp, if there's a player or two or three you can take it in any direction for as many as you want that maybe 
didn't play much last year, special teams, whatever, or an incoming freshman that you really are intrigued to see play, who would that or those guys be? Oh, that's easy. Uh, Derek Stingley, for sure. He's He was the number one cornerback in the class of, of 2019 out, out of right here in Baton Rouge. And in fact, he was the highest rated cornerback that LSU has ever signed, according to the 247 rankings, higher even than Patrick Peterson, which obviously that, that, that says a lot. And he's here this spring. He'll be playing on Saturday. And I would expect him to, to have the odds on the odds on favorite position to, uh, to start opposite Christian Fulton, who was very, very good last year, opposite Greedy Williams. On top of that, you also have a freshman nose tackle named Siaki Ipu, Apu Aika, who uh, you know has come in as an early enrollee and by most accounts has been very impressive. I expect him to get in the, the, the rotation on LSU's defensive line. And, you know, I, I'm going to be watching both those guys uh, amongst some of the veterans who are a little unknown. Tight end Jamal Pettigrew was going to be last year's number two tight end, blew out his knee in the summer. If he could stay healthy, he's maybe uh, more of a, a receiving tight end than what LSU's had in recent years. But we'll see that, that obviously LSU hasn't really featured a tight end in a long time. So we'll see if that pans out. And other than that, I'm just watching some of the last year's young guys, guys like Jamar Chase, Terrace Marshall, Justin Jefferson, see how they progress and how they get better. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the LSU Tigers. Uh, and uh, we've uh, enjoyed the analysis with uh, Billy Gomilla from SB Nations uh, and the Valley Shook for quite a few years. Billy, we appreciate you making time tonight. Absolutely. Anytime, man.